We open this series with a few points about the misuse of Isaiah 9.10 by Jonathan Kahn. We also noted that he erroneously, or imaginatively, read defiance against God into uses of that passage by politicians. To be sure, the politicos used the passage out of context, but their purpose in doing so was to encourage, not to rebel. Maybe as an answer, Khan would assure us that there was defiance, but it was hidden under the surface. Positing a secret factor like that is a great way to make sure you're always right about something. Another point of significance is the frequency with which, Khan says, politicians use the words, we will rebuild, when commenting on the World Trade Center disaster. This is a weaker point than Khan will wish to admit. He does admit that it would have been natural to speak of rebuilding, and that in itself thoroughly undermines any further claims he may make on this point. Even so, he says, the fact that these particular words continuously came forth from the mouths of American leaders, over and over again, is striking. The persistence of, quote, we will rebuild, isn't particularly significant or surprising. Nor is it surprising that Barack Obama would recycle the phrase for an address to Congress on February 24, 2009, even though he used it in reference to the economy, rather than destroyed buildings. But what's the big deal about it? According to Khan, the big deal is how many times that phrase was featured in news headlines. After all, the media chose those words out of thousands in the speech, so this surely must have been some sort of divine demonstration, right? Well, not really. If you've read news media material for any period of time, you know that news agencies frequently make use of the same story from a single source. In other words, a leading reporter may write a story, and then other agencies will pick it up and use it, often verbatim, with few or no changes. That's one reason why it's no big deal that so many sources reused what amounted to the same headline. Another factor is one that Khan dismisses too quickly. He thinks the location of the we will rebuild phrase in Obama's speech was irrelevant, but it actually wasn't. If you look at the text of the speech, you can see that the phrase was part of what was intended to be a thesis statement for the entire speech. Reporters, who are also generally decent writers, wouldn't miss this, and that wasn't intended. So naturally, this sentence becomes the focus of headlines. There's no divine coincidence here, just good writing and communication. We can also remark on the coincidence Khan perceives in the fact that the words rebuild and stronger than before happen to have been found in a biblical commentary on Isaiah 9.10. The original statement comes from a Wycliffe commentary. You might then compare that to the words of Obama. Well, if there's some sort of prophetic significance to that, then what about this? Well, what do you know? Oscar Goldman was a prophet and he never realized it. And that was just the most popular of many examples I found where the key words were used in combination. This may seem kind of silly, but it really just shows how silly Khan's idea is that such a commonplace phrase, or the use of such commonplace words in close proximity or combination, can be of any particular significance. Khan also manages to find a degree of significance in the building of the Freedom Tower. Once again, he says, it was about defiance, but there's not a clue that any of this defiance was directed towards God, or towards anyone other than Islamic terrorists. So Khan must again wrestle with evidence to turn this into some sort of secret effort of spitting in God's face, and here's what he comes up with. First, he points out that the Greek Old Testament just happens to render Isaiah 9:10 differently. This is true, and you can practically hear Khan and his followers jumping up and down in excitement. But there's more than a few problems here. The phrase is actually an echo of the story of the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11. And as we showed in this vid, that tower was actually a ziggurat, a sort of pyramid, not a skyscraper sort of building. So there can't be a parallel to the Freedom Tower. 
Kahn's second claim of parallel notes Isaiah's reference to hewn stone, which he supposes is significantly paralleled by what was called the Freedom Stone, a quarried granite stone from the Adirondack Mountains, which was intended to be used as a foundation stone for the Freedom Tower. But there's nothing unusual here. It's typical to use quarried stone for a foundation stone, because it's denser, and granite is one of the usual choices for such a stone. Again, Khan tries to make a connection based on the so-called attitude of those who laid the stone, which he supposes shows defiance to God, quote, beneath the surface. He quotes statements of the laying of the stone to this effect. But in this case, he needs to finish the quote. If this is defiance against God, it must be so far beneath the surface that it takes an oil rig to pump it out. That's another aspect of Khan's misuse of Isaiah 9.10 taken care of, but we're not quite done with that verse yet. Next we'll have a look at how he thinks the second part of that verse was remixed in modern times. See you then.